and thanks for tuning in to Gypsy Fan Creations. It is officially spring. It's great. The robins are outside and the daffodils are coming up and I just love it. So I thought the best way to start off spring soaps is with a moon soap. I haven't been making soap for quite a year, but since I've started I've managed to make a summer soap, a moon a summer moon soap, a fall moon soap, and a winter moon soap. And I thought why not? come full circle and make a spring moon soap. So let's get started. Never watched me make these moon soaps before. You'll know it is a two step process. Um, starting off with the moon in bed, I have some lye water and a little bit of sodium lactate in here that I am mixing with the oils and just giving that a whirl with the kitchen vibrator. Alright, so then I'm going to split this up into three different colors. I've got some rose pink for spring and some shimmer gold. And then we'll do the main batter in white. Now there's not a lot of soap batter that goes into this just because it is a very small embed for a moon. And I'm going to start with white. Hello. I've got some titanium dioxide. Pour that in there. And then I always like to use a little bit of snowflake sparkle from Brambleberry. Add a little sparkle to it. And we'll start with that. So as awesome as this soap is for me, um, you know, cutting into it and having it look like a moon and the swirlies and the colors and all that. It is like my least favorite soap to make <laughs> because it takes more than one day to make it and it's just, it's a pain in the butt. It really is. <laughs> but I just enjoy the outcome of it so much that I'm probably going to just keep making them for every uh, season. And then the fragrance I'm using is Japanese Cherry Blossom from Wholesale Supplies Plus because when I think of spring, I think of Japanese Cherry Blossoms. So this has 1% vanilla in it, so I added just a little bit of vanilla stabilizer to it. And then the rest of it I'm going to use in the um, second half of the batch. So I'm going to mix that into each one of these. <clears throat> and then what I usually do is a drop swirl, or not, no, an in the pot swirl, <laughs> and then pour it into the PVC pipe I have lined with parchment paper. Okay, so how this works is I am going to pour each one of the colors into this white. And scrape that out. And 
then I have a PVC pipe as the embed mold. Another reason why I'm not a huge fan of making this soap is because I haven't mastered the whole technique with the PVC pipe. So I've lined it with some parchment paper. It can be a little difficult to get out sometimes, but I do my best. All right, so I'll just give that a little swirl with my spatula and then I'm going to pour it into the PVC pipe. And I've sat it in the cup so that the bottom of it is supported. I'm trying to scrape out what's left also in these bowls. You want to get everything out. And then I'll let that sit for probably 24 hours because it is so difficult to get out. You really want to make sure that it is hardened up. All right. And then I'll just give this a little tap. Very, very easily. And then we'll let this sit. And I'll be back to put, put it into the base of the soap that's going to be all black like the sky. Alright, so I am back with part two of this moon soap. Here is the moon in bed. And like I said, it is a pain in the butt getting that out of the PVC pipe, so it's not my favorite thing to do. But I, I did it. It's out. We're good. Let's continue soaping here. So the second part, similar to the first part, we're just going to make the other half of the soap or the sky part of it by pouring in the lye water solution with the sodium lactate down the kitchen vibrator and give that a whirl. Alright, set that to the side. And this is the fourth time I've made this soap and the first three times I made it I was not very successful in accurately measuring out the base and the moon in bed to have like the full loaf or bar of soap that I wanted. So fingers crossed that I I got that this time. <laughs> Alright, so I poured the fragrance in the rest of the Japanese cherry blossom because I'm not doing anything fancy with this except making the batter and pouring it in. No swirls or anything like that. Alright, so starting with the activated charcoal, this is from Crafter's Choice. It's a huge four ounce container of it. I'm sure it will last me forever. And then I like to add a little black onyx flare from Nurture Soap because it's sparkly. Little sparkles in there. Like little stars. Come on, I think I need to get more. Alright, and so I'm going to start with that. I'm going to mix this up and see if I got the dark sky color that I'm looking for. Ooh, yes. I think I need a little more. Activated charcoal is really good as a colorant. You've probably heard me say that before and it's also really good for the skin. It's a great um, detoxifier and exfoliant. So I have no problem adding activated charcoal to any of the soaps that I want black. I just use that as the color. And then a little more sparkly. Try this again. Right, maybe just a little teeny tiny bit more. It's almost as dark as I want it. I don't want a gray sky. I want the dark black night sky. Add a little bit more of that. Alright, so done with this and I'm going to just scrape everything off of this and put it to the side and then I'm going to start pouring it into the mold. Um, I kind of want the moon to be suspended so I will pour the first layer in there. I will let it sit for a hot minute and then I will put the moon bed in bed in there. So let's get that going. Get you in for a closer look too. So I'm going to start by pouring just the bottom layer and 
letting that sit. Before I put this guy in here, spray that a little bit with the isopropyl and give it a few minutes and then I'll come back to stick this in here. Let's try carefully, carefully setting this in here. And centering it like that. And then I'll pour the rest of this in. actually did it right this time. <laughs> I might even have a little bit extra that I can make something else out of the black um, soap with. So, better too much than too little. I'm just going to give that a little tap. More on there. And then I'm going to go get the icing together so that I can make the clouds. And then for the spring version of this moon soap, I've got some little pink flowers that are supposed to be cherry blossoms and then some stars. So let me go get the top ready and I'll be back. Back with the icing, the cloud icing, fluffy, creamy, cloud looking icing. If you guys are interested in that recipe, there is a video you can watch um, where I showed you my secret recipe. And I'm not, there's no rhyme or reason to how I'm putting this on. I just kind of want it to look like clouds, so I'm just like smushing it on there. And if I push down into the bottom layer, that's great too because then it looks more like a cloud in the sky than just like sitting on top of a straight loaf of soap. So kind of going for that look. And then I'm just going to keep going with that. And it actually looks like clouds, I think. So if you guys have been watching, you'll know that I am from uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and that is near DC. And I'm ashamed to say that I've never seen real cherry blossoms. <laughs> I've never gone to DC to see the Japanese cherry blossoms. Um, DC is just kind of, I have went there for the zoo. I think I've probably done like a field trip way back in the day for school. I've never really been one to want to go visit DC. Like this driving and trying to get around it, eh, not my cup of tea. Um, but maybe one day I'll get to go see the Japanese cherry blossoms and tell you guys all about it. But for now, I'll just look at pictures and make pretty soaps that, ins <laughs> that are inspired by them. Um, I know that's a thing. Like a lot of people will travel to DC just for that, but. I'm not really into that. I'm not, also not very into politics, so when I think of D.C., that's what I think of, like, the White House and things, presidents, and, again, no interest. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to keep going here. The zoo's really nice though, and I, I think it's free. Like, I remember it being free. The parking, on the other hand, I think was like $60, so <laughs> it's kind of free. But they do have a really big zoo. It's really, really cool. Like, the, the lions, I think, get to roam around. Not like with people, but like in many areas, they have like tunnels that they can go through and they're like up above you and around you and you really get to see a different view than like, you know, standing 400 feet away from a concrete like den. 
so it, that is really neat I would go back to the zoo once the weather gets warmer so maybe I'll have to make a trip to go see the cherry blossoms as well all right so I think I have a good amount of cloud on here so I'm just going to start sticking the in beds on like I usually do I usually do um, the stars in the middle like so and try to really do a good job of lining that up I think sometimes I, I rush this part all right I need I need a little pop in here Taking my time. I think. Now I'm just like being OCD about it. I don't know. And then I'll remind myself to turn the star the right way on here, on that end piece. Telling myself, but I'm not doing it. All right, there we go. I think that's good. And then what I'm gonna do is add the flowers to the side. All right, like this. And I will leave the link for these molds down below. This was a fondant tool that I used to make these with soap dough. And then the, the stars are a chocolate mold. So look for that down below if you're interested in using it. I'm trying to leave all the things I can possibly think of and link to down below. So if you guys ever are interested in anything you see me use, just Look in the description box or leave me a comment. I have no secrets. I will tell you everything. I'm trying not to break these because I've already broken one and I'm hoping I was smart and made an extra, but I don't think I did. Got a little broken guy here, and I'm just gonna put him on there. And hopefully, oh, there's his leaf. Look, watch. Fixed. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna top this off with some snowflake sparkle. And some glitter as well. And then I'm going to put some rubbing alcohol on here. It's isopropyl alcohol and a spray bottle. It stops the soda ash. And it kind of helps things stick like that glitter. It'll keep it on there. So I'll let this sit for about 24 to 48 hours. And when I come back to cut it, we'll see how pretty this moon inside is for spring. All right, time to cut this one. And I can't believe I actually got this recipe correct so that it actually has the right amount of moon in bed and sky. I'm just so thrilled. Took me four tries, but I think I got it. All right, ready? Boom. Beautiful. I'm loving that pink. Love it. So, since it's a spring soap, my curious question for this video is, what are you looking forward to most of the spring? And you can just leave that in the comments down below. And I'm messing up my flowers here. Uh, I'm just looking for altogether warm weather. Like, I'm so tired of this cold. I really am. Nothing else too exciting. <laughs> just warmer weather. So I found some fun facts. Um, so the full moon in April is called the pink moon. So this is very appropriate. But I found some fun facts on, um, what are these called? Japanese cherry blossoms, duh. And that they are Japan's national flower, the country's national flower. They have over 200 different varieties and they symbolize renewal and hope 
and they herald the arrival of spring. I am so butchering these flowers, by the way. They're just being cut all up. All right, and they take that—they take them very seriously over there. I mean, they make them into food. They have festivals. They're just everywhere. They have picnics under them. They love their Japanese cherry blossoms over there. But they're not the Japanese cherry blossom capital of the world. They're not the cherry blossom capital of the world. Japan isn't. It is actually... I'm going to cut that. It is actually Georgia in the U.S. Which I never would have thought that. Just, I just love it. I just absolutely love this. Like, I want to make a whole bunch more, but I know they're a pain in the butt. And then the Japanese cherry blossoms that are in D.C. actually were given to us in... I'm having trouble here. Can you tell? Hmm. I think I jinxed myself. I just went and, like, patted myself on the back for this awesome soap, and then I just butchered it. <laughs> Where was I? They were given to us in 1915 from Japan as a token of like friendship and goodwill. And in return, we gave them dogwoods. So, there, so there's your fun facts for the day. Even though I'm, t I'm just messing mine up so bad. Well, the inside looks good. I have to work on the outside. Maybe if I like made them, I don't know, pushed them in more, I don't know. But you get the point. The moon's pretty. It's all about the moon, right? See, look at this. <laughs> Alright, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Leave me any questions or comments down below. And until next time, smell you later.